I'm going to talk just a little bit about warping. Um, it is not always predictable. Generally, it's kind of predictable. If you look at this, this little piece of holly, this is the center of the tree. It orients on the tree this way for up and down, then this being the outside. And generally, there's very little shrinking up and down the tree, but quite a bit around the girth of it. So that's what gives it the oval shape. And if you look at it sideways, high on the ends and scoops down and comes back up again. That is fairly normal for these. Um, some pieces will shrink more, some will shrink less. This great big monster bowl here, that's an example of extreme shrinking. This came off my lathe at 22 inches in diameter. It finished moving at about 25 by 17 inches. So Madrone is one of those ones that you just never know what it's going to do. The only thing unusual about the way this one dried is it stayed fairly flat across the top and on the bottom. Um, one of my friends had one where the ends actually turned inside. Uh, why it did it, um, I think it just did it because it's Madrone for no other particular reason. And this is turned to again with the center of the tree is here and the outside of the tree is down below. So here it is again on the vertical plane. This is up and down on the tree. This is the center. This is the outside of the tree around this way. Okay, this is a piece from a London plane tree, which is mostly called sycamore. If you can see the circular pattern here, I'm getting rings in the bottom with the grain. And that is because this one has been turned with this part being the center of the tree and this being the outside of the tree. Warping pattern's a little bit different. It tends to be a little bit higher towards the center, lower down here. And this kind too tends, the bottom will be rounded like this. And the other type where I turn them, it tends to be more concave. And I never really worry about flattening the bottoms of these off. People seem to like it. It seems to fit with the organic design of the bowl. I just, I just love them when they warp. Okay, for bowl designs, I don't think there's any one perfect design or size or shape. Everybody does things differently, and the thing that really brought this to my attention, tried a big bowl. I did kind of an OG shape like this on the edge. It was a lot deeper, and I got done with it, and I looked at it and thought, oh, man, that is ugly. That is just totally wrong. I sanded it and finished it, and the first show I had it out on a shelf. A gentleman walked in who normally buys a bunch of bowls for me, takes them down to his kitchen gallery in California, and that was the first bowl he put in his box of bowls. No matter how ugly it is, somebody will find it and think it's the prettiest thing in the world, and I don't really care about it beyond that. I like to experiment. If they don't look that nice, somebody will want it. Um, maybe even the dog will want it. Now for bowl sizes, again, we're getting into here. This is a little bit big for what I would consider my personal size meal bowls, but this is getting into the size that you would consider like a salad bowl for a small family or two people. Um, some people want bowls this size for their personal bowl. Same with this bowl. This is getting into that personal salad bowl size to small family. You start getting up bigger like this. This is generally small family. This is like medium-sized family. That's a fairly good-sized bowl there. Now you can get up to a monster like this. Um, I don't know if this one will ever end up selling for me. This is definitely a party bowl or for a very large family. People like to do lots of entertaining. It is made for daily use. It's just a matter of somebody that wants to use something like this on a frequent basis. This is a bowl I turned quite some time ago, and it served me well going to shows for about 10 years or more. Um, this particular design, a lot of people call it a dog food bowl because the edges are pretty straight up and down. While it's not aesthetically that pleasing, uh, the thing I like about it, I eat with chopsticks a lot. It gives you a flat place on here. You can get the chopsticks in and get up the last little bits of it. This particular type of a transition here is fairly sharp. It's difficult to get your gouge down and through that because that transition is so sharp. Some people try to do it with a scraper, and this is most things where you have to be careful if you're coming across the bottom, and you hit here, you can have the nose and the entire blade of the scraper into the wood at one time, and that's an awful lot of force. You can yank it out of your hands, you can roll it up on edge, pull around, that helps a little bit. Um, 
This one also is a piece of eastern ash. It was snow white when it was brand new and I've eaten virtually everything you can fit into a bowl out of this. Ice cream, soup, pasta, salad, stir fries, barbecue. If it fits in the bowl it goes in here. Served me quite well. Okay, I call this a uh, meal bowl. So basically you can fit an entire meal in it. Again I like taking this one to the craft shows and you can put you know a half chicken and the beans and potato salad in it. Uh, fit a stir fry, French toast. And if you look the inside's fairly dark, the outside's a little bit lighter. I haven't done any treatment to this other than the initial oiling. Most of your foods will have some oils in them and I don't worry too much about re-oiling it every time I use it. Some people do. Um, clean up purposes. All I do to these, rinse it off, use a plastic scrubby on it once in a while, let it air dry. The main thing you don't want is to store wet foods in it. If it starts feeling a little bit gummy on the inside, that's when you take a little bit of soap and water to it. Or if you don't want to use soap, you can take a little bit of uh, table salt and a wedge of lemon or lime. Uh, does the same thing, oil, emulsifiers, and disinfectants. But you can fit a whole meal in there. This type of bowl is referred to as a calabash. Um, calabash is a type of gourd or squash which has a side which has this type of a shape to it where it actually curves back in a little bit on the top. Um, I don't really care for them that much. Some people love them. They're more traditional in like Hawaii and do a little bit of difference in your cutting directions. You're doing more of a pull cut towards the rim and a push cut down through the inside. They work. For me the impractical side is when I want to get the last bit of stuff out of it, have to tip it almost all the way upside down. But they still do look nice. The wide point is a little bit above center most of the bowl down below. Just another variation on style. Smaller bowls like these, I consider these to be like soup or cereal or rice bowls, higher sides, um, generally not very big. Not going to put a whole meal in these, but work great with spoons, um, chopsticks somewhat. Okay, this is an unfinished piece of maple. I was making a plate out of it. Um, the only thing I would consider really wrong with this one, other than it's not being finished right now, is I like more of a lip on the edge. Uh, again, the practical side, you're trying to get something up on your fork or your spoon. If there's no edge to push the stuff up against, it's going to go off the edge of the plate. Generally, I like about an inch and a half or so for thickness. Um, that gives me room to put the lip on it, not too deep, not too shallow. I like turning this type of bowl. It's a, essentially it's a natural edge bowl but the natural edges are on the sides. Unless you're doing one that is fairly deep and has a lot of curve to it, you have to watch out for the way the wood warps. This particular one crowned in the middle, so basically anything I would put in the middle would roll off the edge and that's because of how I cut it out of the log. Basically it was cut out with the orientation of this being the center of the log and the bottom side being the outside of the log. And if I flip this over, you can see the nice cup that it has in there, so if I would have cut this out from this orientation, it would have worked naturally and it would have that nice dish shape in the bottom. So and also if you want to do this with a crotch piece, again I would have the crotch at the very center along the pith. If you're going to turn a fairly shallow platter then it will warp up on the edges rather than if you turn it with the crotch figure being on this part of the wood, uh, then it would warp the other way like this one did and nothing would stay on it, at least nothing that would roll. So this is just grain orientation and how to cut out your bowl blanks.